Today we are going to be talking about posterior probability and prior probabilities. These are two things you need to know in probability and it follows from, from uh, lesson 9 where we discussed application of Bayes theory. So this is just like a continuation and this class will be a very short one because I just want to explain these two things and also the concept of independence in probability theory. So let's get started. I also like to remind you to subscribe if you've not subscribed to my channel by clicking on the subscribe button below and also like this video if it's been informative for you. If there is something you observe you'd like me to do, uh, leave a comment for me to let me know. So let's see prior probability. Let's start with that one. Now, if we know the probability of selecting a box, let's say uh, in these two boxes, we are asked what is the probability of selecting an orange from the blue box. In this case, we are talking about two probabilities. First, we are talking about selecting a box and secondly, selecting an orange from the box. In this case, we know the probability of selecting a box. Therefore, we can say what is the probability of selecting an orange given that the box is blue or given the probability of selecting a blue box. So let's illustrate prior probability in this way. So we are given already, like in the problem we solved, the probability that the box is blue to be 4 over 10. Okay? Or 6 over 10 as the case may be. And now you are asked to find the probability that the fruit is an orange. The next thing is, given that the box is blue. So anytime you have something like this, the conditional probability of selecting something, given that something has happened previously or prior to that happening, that is called prior probability. This is because we are selecting, we are calculating the probability of selecting a fruit, but we already have been given that the box is blue because we are given that the box is blue, right? And now we are trying to select a fruit from inside. So we are called, it's called prior probability because this prior information, of course, is called prior probability because it's a probability available to us before we even select a fruit, right? So we are saying, what's the probability of selecting a fruit? But we have been given probability of selecting a box. So prior to selecting a fruit, prior to this probability we are trying to calculate, we already have a prior knowledge of the previous one. Now, in another case, if something is selected from a box, let's take for instance, I'm holding uh, an item from this from this uh, bottle, and now I'm just holding this item, this this piece of candy here, and the question now is, this candy is red. What is the probability that it came from the yellow box? What is the probability that this candy, the red candy, is selected from the blue box? Or from our example here, somebody is, is holding an apple. And the question is, what is the probability that this apple came from the blue box? Now, if you look at it this way, you are, you are seeing that we are trying to find out something uh, that we kind of, that happened before the current one. So we already know about the fruit selected, the current one, but we are trying to find uh, uh, the, 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 something that happened before then. So that is called posterior probability. It says if we know the identity of the fruit first, then we can use Bayes theorem to find conditional probability of the fruit of the box given the fruit from which the box is selected. This probability is called posterior probability because we obtain this probability after we have identified the identity of the fruit. So try to read it and understand exactly how it goes because it's, it's quite easy to understand. Now, what is independence? I'm going to now write. You already know that if we have something like a P of X, let me just uh, use something better. Okay, if we have 
I'll take a pen. P of x and y equal to um, P of x and P of y. We say that these two events, x and y, are independent. Why? Because in the product rule, we have that P of x and y is the same as P of y given x times P of x. And by the law of symmetry in probability, this is the same as P of y and x, which is the same as P of y, uh, x given y times P of y. So if this, evolve, this, this, this comes down to this, it means that P of x in this case, which is equal to this P of x here, because we have this equivalent to this, right? Of course, everything here is the same. So we are now saying that P of x and y is equal to P of x times P of y, which means that this can be written as the same as P of x. That is, P of x and y is the same as P of x. What this simply means is that if we are trying to find probability of x, if you are given y, but that information does not is not useful or contribute to finding the probability of x, then the two events are independent. Let me think of an illustration to illustrate it. Let's take, for instance, this box of candy. So we have what is the probability of selecting a red candy? Okay, what's the probability of selecting a red candy? And what is the probability of picking up the iPad? So these are two probabilities and they are independent. So if I'm going to write probability, let's say probability of red candy is PR and probability of this picking up an iPad is PI. So PI uh, given the red candy is the same as PI because, because this information, this conditional information you are given does not have any business to do with picking up the iPad. And the same way, P I P R, given that we picked up the iPad, uh, is the same as P R. So basically, the conditional probability, uh, the conditional information does not have additional information, uh, does not add anything to the any new information to finding this probability. And in that way, we say these two events are independent because they don't contribute to finding. Um, to calculating the probability of each of them. So this is how we will stop for now. So we have completed lecture 10 and in the next class we'll continue with lecture, lecture 11 on machine learning 101.